What's up dudes, in this video I will tell you how to acquire expensive Pokemon cards without really breaking the bank, so you can spend a lot less money than they are actually worth. Alright, let's 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 get to it, shall we? So, step number one would be to get a bunch of friends together. You know, chances are, if you're looking to acquire expensive cards for cheap, you're not exactly, you know, fitting in with the budget. So, this step is, is optional, keep that in mind. You can do it alone, but it's, you know, it's going to be a lot easier when doing it with a bunch of friends. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to include four Ryans over here and they're going to do it together. So what you actually will, you know, ideally have as a composition of this friends group is actually four people looking to say start four different collections because it would make things a lot easier. You wouldn't have to fight for cards later and like discuss, okay, who gets what. So if say the Ryan number one is looking to make a dark Pokemon collection, like a make a Gengar VMAX deck and Ryan number three is looking to make a Mew VMAX deck or something like that, or like Mew collection and then Ryan in the middle is kind of like, hey, I like Chunkers, you know, so this will make things a lot easier. Next, in step two, you have to agree on the budget. There's four of you, so chances are you can, you know, come up with a decent number, like a thousand dollars. For the purpose for the purpose of this video, we will talk about a budget of a thousand dollars because it makes the math easy. So, after that's done, what you want to do is take time with actually researching, say, collections for sale, and this is this can be done for the most part, you know, either on the internet. Or you know via your local game shop, which I always support. You know, supporting your local game scene is always nice. And I would suggest you do it simultaneously and not focus on one because it's it's it just makes you know it makes you cast a wider net in terms of the search, and you might find a lot more offers. And also take your time with it. However, there are certain advantages and disadvantages of each approach. So if you're searching on the internet, you might get better deals because you're dealing with uh, just regular people for the most part and it will be easier to negotiate because you can communicate at any time of the day pretty much and you don't have to negotiate right away it like in the store in a physical location however you are running a risk of fraud and just some angry endies when you give them an offer they just be like why are you lowballing me and blah, blah, blah. so if you come across somebody like this just just move on but when it comes to a local game store you know you have the advantage of 100% safe purchases well not 100% there are game stores that will try to fraud their customers, but you, they usually don't last very long. So yeah, it's a it's a safe purchase. You're support you're supporting the local scene. It's always nice. However, the minus here would be that you have to work within their profit margins. As let's say an example would be today's market. If 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 you're asking to purchase cards from a store that purchased them at a high, which which means that they're already running pretty thin on their profit, if any at all. So they will probably not be able to go down on the price, you know, too much, you know, but depends on the situation, how big of the purchase it is, whether it consists of like mostly bulk cards or not, if it consists of like super hits, you know, it depends. It's also maybe a bit easier to really come up with different collection ideas when you're in a store, especially if your store has a lot more inventory. So yeah, that's that. Now, you're going to move to step number four here, which is, let's say we found a collection right now, right? The collection has, it's a modest collection of 2000 cards and it's not really mostly bulk. Uh, it actually has decent hits and most of you are like, not most of all of you are like, mm, I could get something out of that collection, right? But the guy is asking like 1500 for, you know, for the, for the entire thing, if sold separately, you know, he's a little bit uneducated yet in the market he's thinking okay just because i have like uh, i don't know 2000 cards worth 75 cents on average it's gonna be you know 1500 dollars it's not so you have to kind of negotiate with him for the purpose of this video if the negotiation is done or you're negotiating with a store you know uh, retail value would be 1500 and you manage to get 30 percent off which is really within reason it's really not that bad. Uh, so, you, so you're getting a thousand dollar deal because you have a thousand dollar budget. Okay, cool, great. You're satisfied, right? So you purchase the collection. Step number five is that, well, you have to now divide the cards. And I will not necessarily tell you how to do that because it can be a little bit messy. Some people might get a little bit greedy. And so it's important that, you know, you work this step out before you go into this whole thing. So ideally, like it's illustrated here, each and every Ryan is kind of looking to get different cards. So it will be a different, a different thing. And also do not approach it with, okay, let's split every single card out of that collection. Split that collection so that you only take the cards that you need 
and don't just take them because they're left over and that's important because the leftover cards you're going to sell off in step number six let's say the four rands divided 1000 cards be between themselves and there are 1000 cards that nobody really needs we could sell them off to recoup some costs and that is the plan and you're, do you're going to do that mostly in retail values as a thousand cards divided by four people is really not that many cards to move and especially if they are more pricey cards like two dollars and upwards like five bucks ten bucks twenty maybe also don't get all the all the super expensive cards out of the collection if you don't need them because it would bump up your recoup costs a lot so let's say you have one card that costs a hundred dollars and then the, the rest three hundred dollars is just smaller cards right so you're going to sell that back get four hundred dollars back by selling the, the, the cards that are uh, remaining, essentially getting $100 back per person, which is awesome because at the beginning you ended up spending 250, but then once that, once that uh, remaining collection is sold, you actually paid $150 for a very good collection, which consisted of many expensive cards, most likely if you purchased a big collection. And that's really it. This, this strategy has actually helped me uh, build my um, vintage magic the gathering collection it was a, a very good strategy however here are you know a couple disclaimers that um, you should do it with friends that you trust a hundred percent because those unfortunately people are shady and especially when it comes to money you have to know that you can trust these people 100 percent and they will not try and flip on you they will not try and switch you i don't know chuck norris is not gonna be behind the corner right so you should also share cards based on capitals. That's my idea. So let's say we do not all chip in 250 bucks. Let's say I give 500 and the other four guys give the rest 500. So technically I should get a bigger share either of the of the recoup, of the recoup costs by selling the remaining collection or just of the collection itself. If there are many cards that I want, I should get a bigger share because, hey, I paid, you know, I, I gave the biggest percentage of the capital. And when it comes to the recoup costs, you should sh share them, in my opinion, based on capital and the amount of cards taken. As let's say, again, coming back to this example, if well, Ryan number one gave 250 bucks, but he, he picked out like technically $300 worth of cards from the collection. Well, dude, you're not getting 100 bucks back. You know, that would be that would be kind of unfair to, 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 to the rest of, of the friends. So. Kind of work that out a little bit while you're at it so that this is why i'm talking about friends that you have to trust 100 percent that you can have a normal conversation with and last but not least do not be greedy that's like that actually should be the number one don't be greedy you're here to have fun with your friends you're here to make a cool purchase together you know enjoy the whole process because it's you know we're going to be going over 2000 cards and dividing it it's it's a fun activity trust me and it allows you to build a very good start of your of your collection for a very good price essentially if let's go back to to the slide with with expensive cards right uh if that collection right here would have i don't know three gengars worth 100 euros each that's pretty neat of burrito because you didn't have to pay essentially 100 euros for them you probably paid more like 80 euros right now based on that you know cut deal and stuff so it allow if especially you're not looking to buy a lot of bulk, this allows you to 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 get a big collection of good pricey cards for for the low. That's really it. I hope you found this interesting and I hope you enjoy my videos. If you're looking for more cool information and you're looking to learn something, you know, additional when it comes to Pokemon finance, just trading card finance and markets, you know, head over to my channel. Consider becoming a patron too, because I give out my cards every month to my patrons. So <laughs> that's that. I'll see you there.